If you want to calculate trends in Excel, you can use moving averages and exponential smoothing. We will do so by creating charts that do that for you, formulas that do that, and VBA code that does it automatically for you. The first one is we will create in VBA a trend line chart. The second case, we will have VBA create formulas for you. In the third case, we just use formulas that have a nested offset function. And finally, we'll use a formula for exponential smoothing. Start with the first case. We have VBA create this chart on a separate sheet. And we ask the user, how long do you want to wait for period before you start calculating the averages? Let's say three. And you will see at the third time interval, it will start calculating the average of the P previous three. The previous three. The P previous three. The disadvantage of this method is that you don't know what the value of that point is or that point. So in the second case, we will tackle that issue. We will create in column C the values of a smoothed or a moving average. We have VBA do that. We ask the user the number of intervals or periods they want to do. If they say free, like we did here, it will start calculating the value at the third time period. And then the next one is the average of the previous free. In case three, we will do all of this just with formulas. In column C, we will put formulas that have an nested offset function. So it does basically the same. If your period is of interval is three, then it starts at the third time period and it averages the previous three. And finally, we'll, we'll do so with exponential smoothing, which uses a damping factor called alpha. And let's say that is 0.3. And then it uses this formula in order to calculate what the exponential smooth would be. Let's start with case number one. We need to know what the size of the table is in the background. VBA does that through the current region. The current region finds the boundaries of the table, empty rows and empty columns, and in between those is where the current region is located. So when we start our code, we are going to use that knowledge. Let's say we call the subroutine or the macro moving average. And it's going to create a chart with a moving average trend line. We declare a variable of the chart type, another variable of the range type that can be one cell or multiple cells, another one of the series type. Every chart has series of values. Then a variable for the collection of trend lines. Charts have, can have multiple trend lines. And another variable for a specific trend line. Let's set O select to the current region of the active cell. Wherever you happen to be in that table, take the entire current region in between empty rows and empty columns. Then create a new chart by using the variable O chart of the chart type and add to the collections of charts a new chart. We are going to talk to that chart with a with statement, and with. And first of all, we need to set the source data behind the chart. It's going to be O select, which is the current region of the active cell, the entire table. I'm setting the chart type to XY scatter lines but you can choose whatever you want. Uh, I say, no, I don't want a legend. I don't want a title. Uh, I would like one of the axes. This is a collection again. The Excel category axis or the X axis has major grid lines. Yes. And the location for that chart, a new sheet. You can add many more settings for old chart. I'm just giving you a few hints. We are not done yet. So we have to add more. We have to create the trend lines in that chart. So first of all, we say to that O chart, set in the series collection number one, the first one of that collection, 
set that to O series. Then O trend call collection is the collection of trend lines. So we take from O series the collection of trend lines and we determine one specific trend line in there. O trend, trend line, by adding to the collection of trend lines a new one of the moving average type. And we ask in the third argument what is the interval or how many periods, let's say by default three. We determine the line style for that border of O trend. Then at the end we ask the user would you like to delete the chart. If they say yes, we delete O chart. The problem is however when you delete something like this, Microsoft Excel is going to ask the user do you really want to delete this? They just say yes. So let's stop Microsoft from interfering by setting Excel's display alerts to false. Don't forget to set it back to true. Case number two. We are going to put in column C these values starting at a specific interval. In this case I had chosen an average on three periods again, one, two, three. We ask the user whether they want three, four, five or whatever. Remember we know what the current region is. You need to know one more thing. We need to use the R1C1 notation for the formulas. When we are talking about B11, we don't use the R1C1 notation, but if you want, and that is in row 11, column 2. So if you would use R1C1, what would that refer to? To row 1, column 1, which is A1. What would RC refer to? If I happen to be in B11, RC would say in the same row and the same column, which is B11. R1C says go one row down in the same column from B11, that is B12, R minus one, C minus one inside brackets, would be, yes, A10, and sum R2C through R minus one, C, that would be sum B2 through B10 if we have B11 as the active cell. So let's create a new subroutine. I call it average smoothed. I need a variable of the integer type, one of the range type that can be one cells or multiple cells. Ask the user with an input box how many periods do they want to average. Let's say by default three. If they keep that I is going to be three or whatever they had chosen. Talking about range C1, we will refer to that with a with and with statement. And we are going to say put the following value in that range C1, average on i. Let's assume i is free in order to explain what is coming. Set O range to the range based on C1. Remember that was our little table here to the right. Cells 2, 1, that is row 2, column 1, that is C2, up to cells dot current region of C1, rows count 1, that is in this case C26. Then we are going to clear that range from previous settings. We are going to reset that range to the new range, dot range cells i plus 1, if i is free, that would be c4 in the same column, 1, for c26. Put a formula r1c1 in there, and that formula says take the average of the same row, one column to the left, so that is if we happen to be in c4, it is going to be B4 through R minus I is 3 minus 1 is 2 minus 2, two rows up, one column to the left, that would be B2. Usually you would say average B2 through B4. Okay, I did it in the reversed order, it doesn't matter. And make sure that the number format has two decimals in there. 
Let's test these two codes. We are on the first sheet moving line VBA. The shortcut that I created for the first sub is Control Shift M. When I do that, it creates automatically a chart of the XY type. It asks how many periods do you want to cover, let's say three, and it puts a trend line in there based on a period of three. Delete, yes. If I want to do it again, and this time a period of five, it will give me a trend line based on five. Let's test the second one. In this case we are going to put formulas in here. First clean it and then put new formulas based on the average we want. Control Shift A is the shortcut I created. It asks for the numbers of intervals, let's say two in this case. And it's going to recalculate from two on. When you look in that second one, which is in C3, it says average B2 for B3. I do it one more time. Control Shift A based on the number of five. And it leaves the first four empty and it starts at the fifth one. Now the formula situation. I put the periods in E2 and I use the offset function inside the following formula. If the row number of the cell I happen to be in, in C2, that is row 2, is greater than equal to the period plus 1, then take the average, otherwise NA at the end. The average of what? We use the offset function. That starts somewhere, the number of rows and the number of columns start in B2. Offset the rows by minus E2 plus 1, comma, how many columns offset? Zero. And that's the formula in all these cells. If I change the period to 4, you will see that the curve adjusts. That was done with a nested offset function. Finally, exponential smoothing. Put in the formula that is shown as an insert, the damping factor, C1, times the previous x value, B2, plus 1 minus the damping factor, times the previous smoothed value, in this case C2. And that is in all the cells below it. So when I change the damping factor, it will automatically change the curve. And you see the closer I come to 1, the more it follows that trend line. If I go down to a very low number again, then we will see that the line becomes very flattened. Where can you find all of this? I created a tool for you, a CD-ROM called Excel 2007 VBA that has an enormous amount of information about the following issues in part 1, part 2, part 3. In part 2 I cover the formula R1C1 issue with many more examples, so you feel comfortable doing all of this in VBA. Where do you find that tool? MrExcel.com, Amazon.com, just type my name Gerard Verschuren and it will take you to this tool and many other tools I created for you in books and other CD-ROMs.